everyone and welcome to the first in a series of three webinars um, hosted by the European Observatory on Health Systems and Policies on Health System Performance Assessment. Today we will focus on a nine country comparative study led by the University of Groningen in the Netherlands on how public health services are organized in different settings and what the impact that might have on health systems performance. As many of you know, the observatory and the WHO, the World Health Organization, released a HSPA health systems performance assessment framework last year, which can be seen as an updated version of the 2000 WHO framework that was released with its uh, World Health Report that, of that year. And this framework defines a number of performance dimensions, such as equity, quality, access, efficiency, financial protection, health improvement, people-centeredness, responsiveness. And today we want to know how are these goals that I just mentioned influenced by public health measures? So before we start, we'll do a little poll on that very topic and I'll hand over to my colleague, Matthias. To... Thank you so much, Deepa. Oh. And Lucy, can you please launch the poll? So this week we have a bit of a simplified poll. We only have one question and it's a multiple choice question. And the question we put on the table is, improving which aspects of performance are priorities in your country. And here we have, as um, Deepa already mentioned, a different uh, performance dimensions. Some of them are rather intermediary, uh, intermediary um, uh, objectives such as access, efficiency and equity are clearly cross-cutting. You can argue they are both in access, but also for, for quality important. And of course, uh, mobili mobility and mortality is an outcome um, uh, is an outcome dimension as it is health systems responsiveness. And last but not least, of course, final protection. You could also say, of course, in your country, none of the above is um, a priority. The only priority is that the Minister of Health stays in office, but I guess um, it's more complex and more encouraging. So thank you so much. I hope you all had a little bit of a chance to answer that poll. Um, we'll launch straight into our keynote presentation. And we have the privilege of uh, introducing Jochen Mirau, from the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. He's a professor there of public health economics and is also affiliated with the University Medical Center Groningen and is a scientific director, director at Lifelines. Um, he's also a researcher at the Netherlands Interdisciplinary Demographic Institute and an extramural fellow of the Health Econometrics and Data Group of the University of York. And Jochen led this cross-country nine country study that I mentioned um, earlier at the behest of the Dutch government, which he's going to tell us all about um, right now. So I will hand over to Jochen, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Deepa, and thank you very much for this, uh, uh, this kind invitation. So it's a great pleasure for me to be here with you today to discuss with you uh, our health system performance assessment uh, of nine countries, uh, which we did with the framework uh, that Deepa just introduced. Now, let me say from the start that this was an effort that I uh, co-led together with Danielle Janssen, who will be presenting also a spotlight on the Netherlands in a bit. Uh, and I also uh, have, we also had the great benefit uh, of the work that was provided by uh, Simon von der Poel and, uh, and Amrit Sandhu, uh, who helped us greatly in setting up the report, as well as many country agents, uh, which uh, the role which I will discuss in a moment from the various countries that we have, some of which are also with us here today to put a spotlight on uh, their country uh, and the outcomes thereof. So it's very much a group effort. And I think that that is something that, of course, uh, also amplifies uh, and also shows public health. Public health is not a, is not a spectator sport. It's something that you do uh, uh, as an interaction with each other. Now, what I would like to focus uh, on uh, with all of you today uh, is some aspects of, uh, of our report and also how we, how we got there and how we did that. So in the coming, let's say, 10 to 12 minutes, uh, what I would like to talk to you about is how we can use the health system performance assessment framework uh, as developed uh, by the observatory uh, together with the WHO uh, can be used to strengthen public health systems around the world. Uh, to do that, I think it's good to highlight that public health is under pressure. Uh, then I will show uh, how the performance assessment and policy adjustment 
can interact with each other. Uh, we will then discuss the public health system performance assessment, and then I would like to uh, put a particular spotlight on one of the outcomes of our comparative analysis, which focuses on the importance of raising accountability in public health. Um, public health is under pressure in many different ways. Uh, and one way to understand this, for instance, if we look at the uh, sustainable development goals of the United Nations, then sustainable development goal number three uh, focuses on good health and well-being. And this is, for instance, made clear by target 3.4, which says that by 2030, uh, we should reduce by one third premature mortality from non-communicable diseases through prevention, which I've highlighted here, and treatment and promote mental health and well-being. So this is a very strong target to strive for. And we see that in various countries, different instances of this target have been translated into actual policy. For instance, in the Netherlands, there's the so-called mission-driven innovation policy, and there the target is that by 2030, all people in the Netherlands should have five more years in healthy life expectancy, and uh, health inequality should be reduced by 30%. Uh, and we also see typical targets like this uh, for other countries. Nevertheless, in 2020, and I highlight this because this was pre-COVID, uh, it said that although premature mortality from non-communicable diseases is declining in most countries, for most, the pace of change is too slow to achieve societal development goal tar target 3.4. As I said, this was pre-COVID, and what pre-COVID did was exacerbate and also showcase um, the challenges that there are in public health systems around the world. So we see on large scale um, that there is a large amount of, in, of health inequalities in various countries. Uh, the Economist magazine over the last couple of months has raised this issue in various ways, for instance, about the UK, uh, where they try to quantify the millions of years life lost between people with high education and low education. We see a similar discussion uh, also in the Netherlands as else and elsewhere, and COVID has really exacerbated this. And what is highlighted also is the importance of the role of prevention herein, because prevention is seen as a more cost-effective measure to promote health uh, than cure or care are. But then if we look at public health systems and we look at uh, how uh, the public health systems were tested during COVID, uh, we see uh, that many challenges are there to really push through public health. And Starting from this idea that there's a lot of pressure, we also have the idea that we should strengthen public health around the world in order not to just be ready for the next pandemic. It's not about pandemic preparedness, but to also think about how we can handle this pandemic of non-communicable diseases, think about obesity, smoking, and other things, and also the massive health inequalities that there are. So against this background, um, uh, Daniela and I uh, were commissioned by the so-called Council for Public Health and Society to perform an assessment of health systems around the world, which should feed into their advice to the national government on how uh, the public health system should be strengthened. And in our opinion, this is a very important element of performing health system performance assessment, because uh, without, let's say, buy-in from the policymakers, we eventually also have to change the system, uh, the evidence and the insights that you generate might not be uh, uh, might not land in a sufficiently strong step. So in the Netherlands, there's this Council for Public Health and Society, which is an independent advisory body, but its role is enshrined in law, and it is funded by the Ministry of Health. Um, the Ministry of Health and Parliament almost always have to or do react to the advices of the Council, and the advices are often used when designing new policy. And that means that this performance assessment that we did fed straight into the policy debate, which I think is an important element because that's also where we want uh, the performance assessment uh, to land and also to have an active debate with policymakers. Now, the time that we had uh, didn't allow us to do a full scope uh, analysis of the functions, the intermediate objectives and the final goals let alone also societal goals and the socioeconomic determinants. So what we really focused on in our analysis was on the so-called functions uh, in the framework. Uh, and that really helped us because it gave us a way to, a lens to look at 
public health systems around the world. Uh, and of course, it would have been good to also analyze uh, the, the further aspects, but I think this is something we can do in future. And I think also if we look at this nine country comparison, uh, doing this thoroughly over functions, objectives and goals uh, would also be an, a, an effort that would have taken more time and also a larger team. So what we did was focus very much on the four core functions of the public of the health system and and, and analyze that in a public health setting. So we looked at the governance of public health in the different countries, the resource generation, the financing and the service delivery. And we did so in a cross country analysis where the Netherlands was the focal point because that was the country that commissioned our report. And we had eight countries uh, from around the world that we compared with each other, which were Italy, Denmark, England, uh, Latvia, Australia, Chile, Singapore, and British Columbia. Later today, the Netherlands, Denmark, and Latvia will also have a spotlight on, so I'm not going to be saying anything about that. Um, and the way that we wanted to design this set of countries was in collaboration uh, with the observatory to have some countries that are a bit alike in terms of their system. Uh, if you think about, for instance, the Bismarck versus um, a beverage dimension, and also to have a bit of coverage uh, around the world. Of course, also here, one would maybe want more countries, but this was also a trade-off between scope and also the time and uh, resources th that we had. For each country, we had two so-called so country agents, which advised on their country through a long, uh, oh, long, well, I think it was long, uh, through a survey uh, that was sent out and sometimes pre-filled uh, for them. And then in conjunction with them, we tried to get an analysis of how these different aspects of the public health system work in the different countries. The full report is ready now and can be downloaded on the link uh, to the right. And now, which we will also talk about at the end, uh, the report has also been incorporated into the latest uh, advice of the council, uh, which has already been sent to the government, and now we are waiting for the government to react to that. Now, across these dimensions, we try to get a view on the system. Now, the first thing that really uh, comes out, and we have many findings, and I think I'm just, I can just scratch the surface here, is that health systems are often quite well defined in terms of their scope if you think about for instance the hospital system then the uh, primary care and whatnot but the scope of the public health systems really differs quite strongly across countries in fact so much that it's quite hard to define what exactly the public health system is because we see that public health is always and everywhere a very multidisciplinary and multi-institutional effort but which disciplines are involved differ strongly across countries. And we see also that some countries are incorporating this idea of health in and health for all policies much more than others. We also see that the public health workforce, the key resources uh, of the public health field are very broad uh, because of course there's the first line workers, physicians, nurses, what we're used to, but there's also much more in the back office in terms of epidemiologists, uh, public health policymakers. And what we see is that these frontline workers are really permanently obliged to engage in lifelong learning, but the back office and policy workers have a much less, let's say, stringent approach to learning their entire life how to influence and benefit health from the position in which they're in. And we think that it would really be beneficial to have much more lifelong learning also about how policies and structures work, and not just for the frontline workers who, of course, are doing very important work. If we look at funding, um, we see that the share of funding in all countries going to public health is much smaller than the share going to cure or care. But we also see that the potential health gains per euro or dollar or pound, whatever you want to take, uh, spent are much larger in public health. Also in this weekend's uh, edition of the, of the Economist again, there was a, a clear analysis that in order to strengthen the NHS, for instance, prevention per pound spent probably uh, generates more health than, uh, than the care system. Of course, that does not mean that care is not important. What we also see is that public health is often seen as an expenditure. And one of the advices we have is that we should see public health funding much more like an investment, which enables citizens to lead a fulfilling and productive life 
with long-term benefits for educational attainment, labor productivity, and overall well-being. So it's really about these co-benefits of health that are generated at scale through the public health system so that public health is not something you spend on. Public health is an investment in your society for the broad benefit of society. Now, the last thing that I want to highlight, and as I say, uh, I'm really looking forward to the spotlights that are coming, and I also encourage you uh, to read the report. Uh, I think there's a nice also executive summary at the beginning, which really gives the broad scope. One thing that really comes to the fore, uh, and that's why we are highlighting this now, it's also some earlier work I did together with Brigitte Tubus, um, is that public health policy tends to be very output driven with little accountability for the outcomes of public health policy. Now, what does this mean? This means that very often public health policy is evaluated in terms of which programs have been implemented. But whether or not these programs have led to the outcomes in terms of population health outcomes that they were initiated to, there's hardly any accountability for that. Whereas if we look at other fields of government, for instance, the, uh, the national budget, in the European Union, the Euro countries all have the so-called stability and growth pact targets that we should have uh, budget deficits of no more than 3% and public debt no more than 60%. And the Minister of Finance is, uh, is very much responsible for that. So one of the advices we have is that governments shouldn't only be accountable uh, for the outputs, but especially for the outcomes and goals of the health system, uh, which is more abstract but which also means that we really have national targets like the societal development goals that we started with that a minister or other people um, uh, take account are accountable for and can also set up policies to get there. Now, if we go back to this policy thing, we see that the council who had commissioned the report adopted this re recommendation and has now advised the government to integrate legally mandated benchmarks into public health law. And now we will see how the government will work with it. So thank you very much, everybody, for your attention. I'm looking forward uh, to the spotlights. I thank everybody who has um, who has contributed to the report, especially, of course, uh, Daniela, Amrit, uh, and Simon, but also all the um, all the country agents. And I look forward to the discussion that we have today. And with that, I would like to give the floor back to you, Deepa. Thank you so much, Jochen. Uh, it's, it's interesting, very interesting presentation highlighted some of the key topics um, that we'll be hearing about in the panel. Um, the issue of defining the boundaries of public health, the blurry boundary towards curative care, um, the fact that everyone who works in health needs to be learning public health in a life, lifelong way, not just the frontline workers. Um, the, in the financing, we never get past that 3% mark in terms of financing uh, you know, public health services. We need to see it as an investment, not an expenditure. And um, part of that is, is getting people to be more accountable for it. And so we need that goal-oriented targets to do so. Uh, so I will hand over to Matthias now to tell us what people thought about Thank the poll. Thank you so much, Deepa, and thanks for showing the, the poll results. First of all, we had more than 70% of our audience participating in the um, in the poll. And um, clearly, the first message I would take from the results is that um, there's not a single most important uh, reform topic when it comes to performance dimension, but there are many different uh, aspects which are taken care of by governments at the moment, at least in the perception of our audience. Having said this, I think there's also clear um, a bit of a focus on, on access, which doesn't surprise much. Uh, uh, we have waiting lists and backlogs still resulting from COVID-19. We have in some countries problems with access to certain services, sometimes in remote or deprived areas. So I think the access issue here is um, clearly a very important reform issue uh, with regards to outcomes. And of course, efficiency. Efficiency is a cross-cutting um, goal, uh, which can apply to access to quality, to morbidity, mortality, financial protection, and so on. So I think that's always something which is a concern of um, governments to be as efficient as possible. Thank you so much. Uh, back to you, um, Deepa. Thanks, Matthias. Uh, so we see the importance of many of these performance dimensions. 
Um, I'll now hand over to uh, Johan's close colleague, Daniele Janssen, who will be giving us a spotlight on the Netherlands. Daniele is an associate professor, medical sociologist, and head of the research program, Integrated Care for Vulnerable Children, at the Department of Primary and Long-Term Care at the University Medical Center Groningen. And uh, she focuses on assessing health system functioning to particularly to improve pediatric care and is, has led several national in, and international projects on this topic. So I will hand over to you to tell us how public health services are organized in the Netherlands. Over to you, Daniela. Thank you, Deepa. Uh, uh, hello, uh, everybody. Um, uh, I also uh, want to give a uh, big thanks to Simo van der Pol and Amrit Sandu, the uh, researchers uh, on this project, and also to Rinske, Rinske Keuken and Anja Kornstra, who uh, were the Dutch uh, country agents. Next slide, please. Since 2018, the Dutch government has been working together with civil society organizations, including patients organizations, care providers, health insurers, municipalities, sports associations, business funds, uh, uh, civil society organizations, and central government. Uh, they work together in the National Prevention Agreement. And the aim of this agreement is to make the Dutch healthier by reducing smoking, overweight, and problematic alcohol use. The goal set, for example, that no child will take up smoking in 2040, and only 5% of adults will still smoke, and there will be no more women who smoke during pregnancy, are necessary and ambitious. Ambitious because a lot remains to be done to achieve them, and because, like so many uh, countries, a one-size-fits-all approach will not lead to the intended outcomes. Indeed, there are several groups that require a different approach. For example, people with lower education and migrants. The goals in the prevention agreement are widely supported, but are not enough to achieve good health for every Dutch person. Because there are so many more themes that contribute to an improved health. Think, for example, of vaccination, mental health, and the role of particular matter air pollution. Recently, the prevention agreement has been renewed in the so-called healthy and active living agreement. Uh, in, in this agreement, mental health is also included. So how can we use our recent public health system performance assessment to inform health policies and actions in the Netherlands to strengthen the public health system? Next sl uh, slide, please. Regarding governance, in organizing and delivering public health, there is little involvement of other ministries besides the Ministry of Health and of other municipal uh, policy areas in public health care. And in addition, the interplay between the different governmental levels involved is difficult. And as a result, commitment to ad address broad determinants of health it is insufficiently grounded. The public health goals are vague and little operationalized and too focused on the short term, making the commitment to achieve the public health goals too non-committal. Monitoring of progress made is fragmented and insufficient broad and accountability is not conclusive. Regarding resource generation, uh, there are many different major differences between municipal health services in terms of people and resources that are insufficiently supported by policy. And there are considerable shortages of professionals to perform regular tasks and new ones to cope with challenges such as COVID-19. There is also insufficient control of training of professionals in public health care. Regarding financing, as Jochen said, little is spent directly on public health care. Moreover, resources are often temporary in nature, making it challenging to engage in sustainable long-term policy. So what is on the government to-do list? I'll take three important ones. A governance is needed that enables all departments within government to promote health in and for all policies. The government has to propagate that public health is not an exclusive matter of the Ministry of Health or of the municipalities, but a matter that requires government-wide commitment. Work towards clear public health uh, outputs and outcomes. The responsibility for reaching these goals should be defined and legal anchoring of public health goals should be strived for. 
Public health funding should be considered more like an investment so that the solid structural financing of municipalities for the implementation of public health can be ensured. We are very pleased that the Council for Public Health and Society uh, has included our recommendations in an advisory report called On Our Health. And we hope that with these recommendations, we are one step closer to realizing a good, accessible public health system across all involved ministries, and with that to good health for all Dutch people. Thank you for your attention. Back to you, Deepa. Thank you, Daniele. And again, we see how the central role of, of governance, accountability, um, you know, in putting priority in the public health uh, area and putting more investment towards that area. Um, we'll now listen to the Dan Danish experience, which in many ways is, uh, is, is, a, is a dream experience, at least on paper, and uh, Viola will tell us more about that. Uh, Viola Bureau, um, if you could go on screen, is uh, she's a professor of health policy and health organization at the Department of Public Health at Aarhus University in Denmark. And she has extensive experience in health services research in both the research setting, but also in the applied uh, settings. Um, so we are pleased to have you here and I'll hand over to you. Thank you, and um, thank you for uh, the Dutch team uh, around Jochen to put together this very exciting uh, report, and thank you for the invitation uh, to present uh, some points about uh, Denmark. So, so this is about the public health system in Denmark, and uh, what we can learn from a seemingly sort of dream case, but also is uh, challenges. This is a joint uh, presentation uh, with my colleague uh, Helle tagesen Meindale. Uh, also uh, from Aarhus. Uh, the next slide, please. So when I say dream case, why uh, does Denmark maybe uh, look like a dream case? Um, at a basic level, it is a system, a public health system with very high levels of universality and a strong uh, local democracy. Uh, in terms of universality, uh, the public health system is uh, funded by taxes nationally and locally. Uh, which means that um, access um, is based on um, residency um, and need, um, which gives um, a good foundation uh, for uh, realizing equity. Uh, this is combined uh, with a strong uh, local democracy, uh, which means that the uh, municipalities are really the powerhouse uh, of the public um, health system. Uh, they are responsible for health promotion, uh, general uh, prevention. Um, they have also broad responsibility uh, for health, social care, education and housing, uh, which means that uh, they have the possibility uh, to work with uh, health and all policies to coordinate across uh, different policy areas. They are also democratically elected. And coming back to one of the points um, Jochen made, uh, this is, you know, classical um, uh, accountability, democratic accountability, um, which is a really good basis uh, for um, realizing um, something like uh, also also people people centered um, care. So so there's a possibility to tailor uh, public health policies uh, to local uh, population, but of course. Um, there are also challenges. Um, one of the uh, considerable challenges, uh, which Danielle also mentioned in, in, in her presentation in the Netherlands, that there's considerable variation in, in uh, local public health services. Denmark has uh, 98 um, um, municipalities and probably as many different uh, local uh, public health systems, uh, which reflect uh, different local uh, populations. Uh, political priorities, um, financial resources, local cultures, um, and um, legacies. Um, and that also points to a, a second challenge, uh, that is the lack of a comprehensive uh, national framework. Um, public health is regulated by this General um, Health um, Act, uh, which describes the, kind of, uh, the uh, broad responsibilities of municipalities, uh, and that is complemented uh, by uh, specific uh, public health packages uh, for uh, particular uh, issues. Um, 
but but there's otherwise sort of no um, streamlining. Um, so, so what are the kind of lessons uh, we can uh, take from this uh, system? I think one of the lessons we can take from this is that we need to acknowledge you know, possible tensions between different health goals. Uh, for example, in the case of Denmark, uh, we might want to wish uh, for um, a public health um, act, uh, a more specific regulation to streamline uh, the local um, public health systems. Uh, but that might come um, at the expense um, of uh, people-centeredness tailoring to, to local uh, populations, uh, which leads me to the second lesson uh, that we need to be clear about priorities and acceptable trade-offs. Uh, we might, might not be able uh, to resolve um, the sort of tension between uh, different health goals. So I think the best we can do is that uh, we are clear about uh, um, our uh, policy priorities uh, and thereby also can be more transparent uh, about uh, acceptable trade-offs. Thank you very much. I'm going to hand over to Deepa. Thanks, Viola. I think you've raised a lot of really important points that we need to, you know, that we all collectively need to reflect on um, because we heard from the Netherlands how there are you know, issues with governance, with accountability, and yet in Denmark, we have quite good governance in terms of local democracy. Um, but at the same time, you know, what are the impacts of that um, on, on some of our health goals? And we see that we might have improvements in quality at the service delivery level, at least in those local health, health services where you have more capacity, perhaps more resources, but then perhaps at the system level in terms of equity, you, you will have regional variations that are perhaps not acceptable. But at the service delivery level, equity might have actually improved in terms of the vulnerable groups within that uh, district or region um, or um, uh, marginalized and vulnerable, vulnerable groups or lower socioeconomic groups. So there's a lot of questions that are raised here in terms of the different um, uh, goals and um, potential trade-off, which then trade-offs, which then goes back to how how the system is governed. And I think um, we'll we'll try to have a little bit of a discussion about that later if we have some time. Um, I'd like to now hand over to our next spotlight speaker. We are now going to hear from Latvia, uh, from Gertz uh, Briggs, who will be speaking on behalf of himself and his colleague Anita Villarusa, who will then um, be part of the panel discussion later on. Um, Gertz is with the Riga Stradens University in Latvia, has, uh, is a medical doctor, has a PhD, is a professor and head of department in public health and epidemiology. His colleague Anita is with the same university, um, is also a medical doctor and professor in public health and heads the master's program of public health there. I'll hand over to you, Gitz, to tell us about the situation in Latvia. Thank you. Uh, hello to everyone from Riga. And I'm going to give a short, very short presentation regarding our uh, situation in public health in, in, in Latvia. Uh, first of all, I would like to start with an uh, example. And this example is related to um, current uh, basic strategic document in Latvia in public in field of public health. And this is uh, guidelines uh, in public health for 2021-2027, and this document was passed last year, last autumn. And there are five main uh, directions in that document, and just two out of those five directions are uh, can be related or attributed to public health system. This is health behavior and reduction of infectious diseases, and three other points are just uh, management and financing of, of health care. So the problem, which was mentioned already by, by uh, Mr. Miro, this is the overlap between public health system and health care system. And if, if we have to speak just about public health system, sometimes it's uh, challenging and, and a little bit difficult to distinguish and, and make a clear uh, decision. And this is depending certainly on definition of public health and uh, understanding of public health. Uh, 
Current, uh, certainly, there are uh, 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 could be distinguished um, institutions which are clearly related to public health, like a Ministry of Health has a special department of public health, and also there is institution center of disease prevention and control, and main functions are are just related to public health, health promotion and, and, and disease prevention. Then some other uh, institutions like Health Inspectorate, Ministry of, uh, uh, and also other ministries like Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Welfare, have uh, they some uh, units, divisions, which are with functions related to public health. Easier to speak about Latvian public health system if we're turning to functions, and uh, they are uh, could be national level uh, institutions we, which have functions related to public health, like surveillance, uh, vaccination, environmental control, uh, and and also health promotion uh, projects. Then certainly local governments are involved, but, but local governments uh, don't have a leading role. They have like additional role in the, uh, in the public health system. Uh, they are responsible for sanitation, hygiene, and depending on, on uh, local governments, so certainly there are activities related to health promotion. Certainly, NGOs uh, have uh, functions, and they are related to public health functions. Uh, and certainly, uh, health uh, health services uh, like uh, general uh, practitioners, family doctors have functions in public health, and they play important role also in, uh, in implementing public health uh, tasks and, and aims. Uh, and also, as I mentioned before, already uh, other ministries, practically all the ministries have some functions uh, related to public health, like the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Welfare, uh, Ministry even of Internal Affairs and, and um, uh, Transportation, like uh, traffic safety and, and different other functions. But certainly it means there is uh, some, some uh, Fractionism that, that not uh, not functions are are uh, generalized or, or uh, certainly financing. If we're turning to financing and governance, uh, we don't have a special public health or even health care law uh, uh, like a, a rule flow. There is a set of documents, and and as you see around. Uh, 28 documents, different documents related to public health functions, and they're mainly normative documents. And problem uh, is that not always these documents are covered by means, by financial means, human resources, uh, and sometimes they are declarative. Uh, and certainly no clear uh, framework of budget for, for public health. There are certainly some basic financing uh, for institutions I mentioned before, like, like Center of Disease Prevention and Control, but then there are occasional uh, funds, there are projects, uh, there are different uh, international activities where resources are coming for, for public health. Uh, challenges is certainly uh, related to outcomes. And we have one of the highest avoidable mortality uh, in the European Union. And also uh, these main things, main problem is uh, related to health financing. Uh, this is lowest financing in the European and one of the lowest uh, besides Romania and Bulgaria and OECD, other OECD countries. And uh, it means uh, there are catastrophic out-of-pocket uh, spendings for health. And this is also can be related to public health measures like vaccination are not covered, screenings are, are the problem with access to screenings. And, and also due to unpayment, there are a lack of human resources and not only in the public sector, but currently also now in private sector, because private sector uh, has also uh, limited access to private sector and prices are 
uh, due to that going very uh, much up. Um, and certainly one good example uh, for public health system is a situation during COVID. If one has uh, uh, problems before the, the uh, COVID, uh, uh, then it, it means there is a lack of capacity, then certainly we can feel this. Uh, and we're suffering during such an uh, event like, like pandemic. Uh, and possible solutions, certainly. The main topic is efficiency. Uh, if there is a lack of, 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 uh, of uh, resources, yeah, and I have to add also the one reason of lack of resources and underfunding currently, especially this year, is related to war in Ukraine because Latvia, together with uh, Estonia, Lithuania and Poland, we are spending the biggest share of GDP for supporting U Ukraine uh, during the war. And this is like excuses for government, even this year, to diminish uh, total spending on on health uh, in Latvia, and certainly uh, professionals are protesting to that. And also, what is very dangerous, there is idea to limit access to health care. It it means give up idea about a universal health coverage, turning to uh, private health insurance, excluding those who are not paying taxes from from health insurer and this is very threatening and current leading party is pushing already for many years and just now also very much to implement we need uh, actually in this topic we, in this point we need international support somehow to change uh, minds of, of our government thank you Thank you very much, Gert. You've raised uh, some important and sometimes uh, also concerning points in the name of efficiency going towards limiting access uh, in, and confusing efficiency with cost containment, for example, and using the term efficiency as a, as a goal, as a health system goal um, to, um, you know, to have interventions that actually don't go towards uh, higher health systems performance. Um, I'd like to open the floor for, um, for questions now and have all of the panelists come online um, and start with Matthias uh, to summarize a bit what has been going on in the chat box. I've seen that it's been very active with some of our panelists already answering some questions. What have been the key topics, so Matthias? Yes, Deepa, thank you so much. Indeed, it was a quite lively chat box and we got a lot of uh, very interesting input. I, from my point of view, there are three blocks actually of question. The first one is on definitions and methodologies, but I think for our topic here, it's very important because if we want to measure performance of health systems, definitional and methodological issues uh, matter. And one is what Jochen already was referring to, the differences between health systems and public health seems to be quite simple at first sight, but then we had a couple of interventions that might be more difficult. Like for example, have you included not only primary prevention, but also secondary prevention, which would make, uh, which would be imp important? Or how do you actually frame public health services on different levels? Very easily, you can figure that you have, for example, a school nurse going into schools, but at the same time, you have um, transport policies at national level. So how do you how do you account for this when they uh, happen at different levels? And uh, last but not least, with regards to the definitions and uh, methodologies, there was a question how to um, develop actually a matrix on governance and to to measure this. So this was the first block of definitions and methodologies. And then we had a block on governance and accountability. And the first question was, where actually does public health services sit? And does it make a difference? Is it integrated into primary health care? Is it part of the responsibility of the local health authority? Or is it uh, just integrated into the local public health service? different models, different ways to do it, but does it have a, uh, an impact on the performance? And then there was also the question, you know, how do we are talking about the SDGs and Jochen was referring to the SDGs. Um, how can we take, uh, 
how can we integrate the other sectors which are responsible for the for the other um, SDGs, like for example, um, education, um, food, um, climate, uh, and and so on. And um, finally, there was a block on the economics. So a uh, bit of a discussion on the co-benefits, you know, how can we actually demonstrate that um, health promotion and prevention has also positive effects on other sectors, on other SDGs. And uh, last but not least, there was um, a kind of comment, not exactly a question, but um, that uh, whether resource allocation, the, the aim of resource allocation makes a difference, whether it is really allocated towards um, outcomes, um, final goals, or intermediate goals. So uh, deeper definitions, methodologies, governance, and accountability, and a little bit of economics. Yes, got everything there, haven't we? Um, okay, I will, uh, I think on the definitions, um, I, I'd like to maybe just say briefly, but this is something, you know, it came up, as you mentioned in the chat box, came up in almost every country spotlight, that there is a blurred boundary between, you know, public health, curative care, where does health start and end? So this is a, you know, this is this is something that is not is not new yet. It is an important question to ask oneself and to at least clarify in terms of concrete implementation. And when we were um, putting together the health systems performance assessment you know, framework, in a way, this was one of the questions where we said, okay, we're going to put certain things in certain places, and I won't go into the details now because that's not the point of this session. But at one point, some, uh, you know, some, aspects of public health or some activities can be placed in many places or can be part of one or part of the other. It can be part of public health, it can be part of primary care, and you just need to make an executive decision and based on that define your goals, put your budget and move forward. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that's what needs to be done at country level instead of shying away from making a decision because it's a blurred sort of boundary. But uh, on that note, I'd like to hear, we'd like to hear from the panelists how um, those discussions are going in your countries. Is there anyone who'd like to take the floor on that, on definitions of, uh, of public health? Gitz, go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, as far as I remember, already Public Health Society uh, international conferences are discussing on the, this topic already for many, many years. And, and this is also related to functions of public health and to specialists uh, competencies of public health, and, and this is ongoing discussion, but, but also today we feel that this is an open question and we don't have very good answer, because if we're now promoting our interests of public health functions, outcomes, goals, certainly we have to define what we are speaking about, what does it mean, and for instance, for this um, uh, survey, just uh, we are speaking today, uh, we used, uh, there was used a uh, definition, which is uh, actually not the last one. This was, which was stress, just health uh, promotion and disease prevention. But currently we are also defining public health a broader, in a broader way than just prevention and, and uh, promotion. Well, it means that this should be solved and this is a task for academic uh, society, for, for uh, also researchers to go on with this and get a better definition of what is public health and also about functions and also about uh, scope and, and also about profession of, of public health professional. Okay, thank you. Yes, I was sort of thinking, in, in terms of Denmark, there, there's a sort of real tension. On the one hand, you know, we want to measure. And in some ways, uh, because the municipalities are so strong, um, we are in a sort of very good position uh, to move towards uh, that also being a small country. But at the same time, I think particularly among um, public health researchers, there's also an awareness that for too long the public health, you know, the public, the public authorities have been crowding out um, 
the civil society organizations. So we are also sort of looking to civil society organizations. So, so we want to broaden our understanding uh, of public health. But of course, that comes at the expense. Then it becomes much more difficult to measure uh, and to measure outcomes and so on and so on. So I think we are probably sort of rather split. Yes, so that raises the, the, the point of, yes, we want to be more broad in our in inclusiveness and having more stakeholders involved, especially on the topics such as public health, but it makes things much more complex if we want to go towards goal orientation. Somebody has to be accountable amongst this uh, you know, group of, of people. Jochen, um, what's your take from the Dutch perspective? Yeah, wait, I just saw that Daniela, I think, was also trying to raise her hand, but wasn't seen. Maybe Daniela, and then I can add on to that. Sorry, go ahead, Daniela. Yeah, well, uh, you asked what uh, the experiences are in the, and the, the stories uh, uh, in each country. And in the, in the Netherlands, um, is a big question, uh, for example, if uh, uh, general practitioners, what their role is in uh, prevention. And that's... Uh, um, uh, were a very uh, big discussion because uh, uh, some GPs uh, want to uh, dedicate their time and uh, think it's their job to also invest in prevention. Uh, but uh, other GPs uh, say it's not uh, their particular task. And uh, also because the primary care system, especially general practitioners in the Netherlands, as I think everywhere in Europe, uh, they are uh, overloaded with work, uh, so they cannot do prevention uh, on top of that. Uh, but um, I think uh, if you look at the general practitioner in their uh, pure form, they have a very uh, often a very close contact with uh, patients. And uh, well, by many patients, it's appreciated if the, their doctor uh, well, uh, uh, discusses them with them, their health and, and possibilities to uh, uh, do something, uh, for example, uh, uh, to uh, reduce their overweight. But it's a very big uh, discussion. Jochen, did you want to compliment? Yeah, just uh, more, let's say, on the side of civil society that also Viola was talking about. I think there we also see a, a challenge a bit between let's say in the Dutch case, more or less literally, a government that's also between retracting behind the dikes and says, well, you know, society is going to solve this and you have to do it in the neighborhoods and we do, we do it communities. And it's all a very nice language, of course, right? We do with community empowerment. But if you look at some of the structural factors that are um, impeding on public health, so for instance, the proliferation of ultra-processed foods, uh, pollution, all those things, are not things that you can solve, let's say, at the community level by engaging with each other, regardless of how empowered you are. So I think it's also important to rebalance a bit in public health. But of course, it's very much something you want to do in communities. But these communities need to be empowered to do so, to be in environments in which public health can thrive. And that is not an environment where there's a lot of pollution, a lot of ultra-processed foods, and I don't know what uh, coming. And that's, I think, where this point of the discrepancy between these final and intermediate goals becomes very important because if you focus very much on intermediate goals then it's very much well, did, did this neighborhood uh, introduce that program did that happen and it becomes a bit of a checkbox exercise and i think by focusing more on the outcomes you also get a dynamic that if the programs the outputs don't work you strive for new outputs to get to the outcome so of course in the ideal world it doesn't matter whether you go for outputs or outcomes, but because the relationship between outputs and outcomes is uncertain, in the moment that you only go for the outputs, you, you come a bit into the trap that you're just going to produce programs instead of enhancing public health. And I think there in the Netherlands, we are a bit at the point where we really get this hyper focus on what can be done in the communities and that the structural factors to enhance public health are well being forgotten a bit. Okay, so this is yeah, this is a um, a very important point that we need to basically we need to focus on final goals as well as the intermediate goals sort of concomitantly with the flexibility of you know of uh, adapting 
if needed, to really reach those final goals. And that goes back to governance, because you need that governance in order to be able to have that flexibility. And you also raised an important point, Johan, you need systems level governance to address some of those larger, broader issues go uh, with sort of, for example, the food industry, but you also need local governance and community empowerment. And the two have to be complementary and you cannot have one without the other. So if, uh, if over focuses on one without the other, then the environment and the framing is not there for the communities to do what they can do. Whereas if you have only the other, then you don't have the the implementation. And this is what we've tried to set out in the, in the framework as well, putting governance all the way to the left in order to make to show that it's the enabling factor for everything that goes on in the system and that ultimately we want those final goals uh, to be reached. But to get there, there's a lot of little steps along the way that needs to be done. Um, we have a lot of great questions that unfortunately went unanswered. I, I hope that uh, some of them were answered in the chat box. Um, we, have, we are short on time, and so we will um, move on to the wrap up at the moment. Um, if I'm sorry, I see Anita's hand up. So maybe we'll take one more comment from Anita before we go wrap up. Go ahead, Anita, please. Thank you very much. I also would like to add that there is no one simple answer uh, on, on, question, uh, on the question of our webinar. Uh, how, how, However, it is possible that word differences and fragmentation is the right one what characterizes public health system in our countries. And there is uh, might be some uh, important solutions for the future strengthening the public health system. And the firstly, it is stable financing of public health infrastructure and their functions. Uh, second one, this is uh, workforce training, uh, recruitment, and uh, according to the changes of functions and uh, priorities. Third one, it is uh, strengthening cross-sectoral cooperation. And uh, then uh, it's very also uh, essential to develop and modernize the information technologies and data exchange. And finally, evidence-based decisions making and quality improvement, it is possible with funding of research in the public health services and system. Thank you so much, Anita, for summarizing the important points of the whole webinar, really, and showing how um, ultimately, you know, we need to work on all fronts, on the financing, on the governance, on the health workforce, uh, on all fronts simultaneously to get to our, our goals. Um, thank you so much. I'd like to just, before we end, um, if, uh, Lucy, if you could put up the slides with the upcoming webinars, I'd like to remind you that this was the first in a series of three webinars on health systems performance. Our next one is on the 13th of June. And there we talked about, in this webinar, we mentioned community empowerment and participation, uh, for example, in Denmark. We'll look at how do we evaluate that? How do we evaluate local democracy and participatory governance and what uh, through which types of indicators and how can we make those links to those final goals and impact on uh, health systems performance because we need we need to find out how to make those links um, more evidence-based in order to convince our policymakers to do more participatory governance and then we have one on the 20th of june on uh, pandemic preparedness and health systems performance and health assessment and how performance assessments can actually su uh, support measures to prepare for our next pandemic so thank you so much to all of our active audience and see you at our next webinar bye-bye Thank you.